Find the component form of the vector v if the magnitude of vector v is seven, and when drawn in standard position, vector v lies in quadrant three, and makes a 30 degree angle with the negative x-axis, and we're told to give the exact answers. Let's begin by sketching the vector v on the coordinate plane, where the initial side of the angle lies along the positive x-axis, and then we rotate counterclockwise to form an angle that makes a 30 degree angle with the negative x-axis in the third quadrant, and therefore this would be the terminal side here, where the angle form between this terminal side and the negative x-axis is 30 degrees, and therefore the angle theta, which we call the direction of the vector, is this angle here, which would measure 180 plus 30 degrees, or 210 degrees. The magnitude of the vector is seven, and therefore the length of this vector is seven units. Let's go ahead and label this. And now let's sketch the x and y components of the given vector, where this would be the x component, and this would be the y component. Notice by sketching these two components, we form a right triangle, which we can then use to find the x and y components. Let's label the x component x and the y component y. So let's first set this up using what we know about trigonometry, and then we'll take a look at the note shown below to find the component form of a vector given the magnitude and the direction of the vector. Using this reference triangle formed here, we now know the cosine of 210 degrees is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, or x divided by r, which is x divided by seven. And if we multiply both sides by seven, we have x equals seven times cosine 210 degrees, which will give us the x component of the given vector. Similarly, we can state that sine 210 degrees is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, or y divided by r, which is y divided by seven. Multiplying both sides by seven, we have y equals seven times sine 210 degrees. And now let's take a look at the notes on the bottom left. If a vector v makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis, then the x component of the vector is equal to the magnitude of vector v times cosine theta, and the y component is equal to the magnitude of v times sine theta which is exactly what we have here. We're just replacing r with the magnitude of the vector. So now we know vector v has an x component of seven cosine 210 degrees and a y component of seven times sine 210 degrees. When we are told to find the exact values, we can find the exact values for cosine 210 degrees and sine 210 degrees either using a reference triangle or the unit circle. And let's review both. Let's go ahead and sketch the reference triangle for 210 degrees in the third quadrant here, where the reference angle is three degrees, which means we can label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, and the long leg square root three. But because we're in the third quadrant where both x and y are negative, both legs are negative. So this is the reference triangle for 210 degrees, which we can then use to determine the exact trig function values, where the cosine of 210 degrees is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is negative square root three divided by two, and sine 210 degrees is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is negative one half. Or using the unit circle, the terminal side of 210 degrees intersects the unit circle at this point here, where on the unit circle x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta, verifying cosine 210 degrees is equal to negative square root three divided by two, and sine 210 degrees is equal to negative one half, which means the exact x component is equal to seven times negative square root three divided by two, and the exact y component is equal to seven times negative one half.
multiplying, we have vector v has an x component of negative 7 square root 3 divided by 2 and an exact y component of negative 7 halves. I hope you found this helpful.